What, what is that? No, 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 it's not ready. No, it's not ready yet. Get out of here. Get, get, get. Get. It's not ready yet. Get out. I'm late again. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I'll try to keep this short because I know that you are all here for the cake. Um, if you are new to this channel, hello. I make cute little food frogs. And I currently have a challenge going where whenever I hit certain subscriber milestones, I create a new frog cake tier to add to my frog cake pictured here, the almighty frog cake. So if you would like to build the frog cake, please subscribe. This was the original plan. However, my subscribers decided to use that as a speed run challenge. And this is the new plan. We are at the 200,000 layer. Let's get started. Step one, we must create a sketch. I don't normally create sketches for my frogs. However, these cakes are getting quite unruly. So I think it might be a good idea to start making some. So my initial plan was I kind of wanted it to be like two brother strawberry cakes where they were different style strawberry cakes. One would be like a traditional iced cake with some cute little decorations. And the other one would be like a naked style so we can play with texture and whatnot. Now I do still really love this idea. And if you were interested in this, let me know because it could be fun, another fun video to just make this as a standalone, especially if it's a little bit smaller. Because the big issue with this idea is it will be really hard to make this level. This is going to be a building block in a massive cake. So it needs to be level. Otherwise it's going to end up being a leaning tower of froggos. So very quickly decided that we needed to change course. So we're going back to a more simple style cake. And given that the first pink layer was kind of more simple and just kind of like nice icing, I think I want to take that, but dial it up. Like all those beautiful faux cakes, those decorative cakes that I see online. And then I think I want to add candles. My husband mentioned the idea of candles. And at first I was like, I don't know about that. But as I thought about it more, I realized that if I did candles, I could give it like six arms holding candles, <laughs> almost like a candelabra look. And that idea enchanted me. Which takes us to step number two. We've got to sculpt this guy. So I'm not gonna to get too in depth with techniques and how to sculpt. To be honest, I still considered myself to be a beginner at sculpting. I only really got serious about sculpting in ZBrush this year. So there's a lot that I still don't know. And so I don't know how good I am at teaching it. But the basic technique that I always fall back on is breaking things down into their simplest forms. In my case, I always start everything off the sphere. As you can see here, I started the base of the face with the sphere, just mushing it around until it was the right shape. I started the arm that way and later you'll see me start the hand that way. I'm also not sure how many people are using ZBrush. I know it's really expensive. And so a lot of people are probably starting off with Blender or Nomad Sculpt. So I hope this is at least helpful to see me working. Now it's time to watch me redo this face over and over again because it was horrifying for a bit. Don't worry, we eventually got there. Now we're just going in and sculpting the candles. These were pretty simple. I then added the wick and the flame and the wick was pretty thin. I actually went back in and made it thicker, but spoiler, I did not make it thick enough and that will come back to haunt me in the future. Okay, we're coming up on the hand now and these hands were probably almost the death of me. Now, I know that hands are hard. Yes, I know they're hard to draw and they're hard to sculpt. That, that much I knew already, <laughs> but for the life of me, I could not get it to work. Um, and I think it was because I was trying to sculpt all of it in one go. Like, as you can see, I was trying to do all of the fingers and all the arm kind of together. And after re-sculpting it probably four times, I decided that I would give up and go to bed <laughs> and try again in the morning. Okay, coming at it fresh, I decided to break it down into its most basic components, as I mentioned at the beginning. I'm going to do the palm and each of the four fingers separately. I'm going to just start with the sphere, model the palm, start with the sphere, model each of the fingers. And when I did that, it was finally actually starting to work. just realized that I don't know what YouTube's policy is around frog nudity, so uh, I'm just going to cover the badonk. Just know that right now I am sculpting a very beautiful badonk for my frog cake. So. 
Now, with this many arms, I decided that we have to accessorize some of them, so I added some cute, chunky bracelets to two of them. So I hope that was at least a little bit helpful. I didn't want to get too in depth, but if you have any questions, no, 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 get, no, get, 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 no, 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 get out, get out of here. It is time to print this big boy. To figure out how we need to chop it up, I brought in this block that is the same size as my print bed capacity. After some fiddling and experimentation, it looks like breaking up into four quarters is going to be the least terrible way to chop it up. A lot of people ask how I get my prints so smooth, and the answer is it's because I use resin printers, which are different from filament printers. They use liquid resin to print instead of spools of filament. Because of how big these are, I am gonna be printing them hollow. If you ever print hollow, make sure that you add drainage holes so that you don't end up with trapped resin inside. Also, always triple check your sliced file because last minute I discovered that these candles actually were big enough to have hollow spots where resin would get trapped. The printing process actually started off very smoothly until... Well folks, we've had two print failures now with the booty piece. This is the booty piece. The booty has broken my printer. That's a little dramatic. The, the booty has not broken my printer, but it is giving me problems. This cake is printed in four pieces. The other three printed just fine. I didn't have any issues, so I was able to print it, and they were done. Each of these pieces takes seven to 10 hours to print. And however, now that we're on the final piece, the booty piece, we've had two print failures in a row, which is really frustrating because uh, you can't really tell that it's failed until like three hours into the print. In this case, the most recent case, um, the cake had detached from the raft and was now floating in a vat of resin. So we're gonna try again. I, this time I'm printing directly on the print bed and we're gonna hope that that works. I really hope it does, uh, otherwise this video is never coming out because I just can't print the freaking booty. <laughs> so luckily, third time's a charm, printing the butt directly on the print bed, it worked. We have the butt, the butt has been secured. So now I just need to cure them outside because they're so big, they don't fit in my curing station. We need to assemble. We're gonna need some epoxy to glue all this together. I did also put holes for dowels to go in between each of the layers like cross brace it because otherwise I feel like the epoxy would just immediately break at some point. So this will just help give it a little bit more stability. And before we epoxy, we want to sand the in-between edges where the epoxy is gonna go just to give it like a nice rough surface to adhere to. I need you all to pray for me because I live in a two bedroom condo in Southern California, which means that my workspace is my front porch. And I don't know if you noticed, it's summertime and it is hot as Patookie outside, <laughs> which means that whenever I need to do anything shop related, this happens. It's hot. First, I'm going to do a dry fit to make sure that when I put the dowels in and squish it all together, that it actually all lines up properly. Then we'll epoxy it together and there will be gaps just because there is a little bit of warping that happens when you print. So I'm going to fill that with Bondo. Bondo time. Okay, I have ugh, bondoed the big cracks. Uh, da, da, da. I have bondoed and sanded them. And so next I need to go in with these little teeny cracks, like the, the more fiddly bits. I need to go in with some milli putt and blend those edges. Uh, and then I'll have to sand it again, and then I can prime it. So that tomorrow, hopefully, if I can get that all done tonight, we can paint, 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 paint. Yeah, I didn't get it primed in time last night, but I primed it this morning. And now I can see all of the imperfections even more. Let me get up in there. 
I tried. I think the light is blowing out a lot of it, which is good for me. <laughs> uh, the seams were definitely difficult. Some of them were easier to patch than others. She's a little uneven. We're gonna have to sand a little bit more before I paint. My life is sanding. My life is sanding. I have broken the cake. <laughs> I have broken four of the six candle flames off. See those? I see. We can now move on to paint, which is going to be pretty straightforward. I always recommend miniature paints whenever you're doing small details, though this is not as small as what I usually paint. They just have a lot of pigment while still being very thin, so it doesn't flood any of your fine details. Also, a personal massager works very well as a paint mixer. I have a gift. It's a wiener. Here's where we're at. We've got so much more to do. We did the, based out the medium pink. Don't look at the bottom. So now we have to go through and do all of the piping. No, get, no, it's not ready. It's not ready yet. Get out of here, get out. Okay, now we're adding some of the finishing touches. I really wanted these pearls to have an iridescence to them. I didn't have a good metallic color, but I did have this mica color that is a duochrome pink to purple to green. So I just mixed it with my gloss medium and I'm going to glaze all of the pearls. And of course I have to glue back on all of the flames that I broke off. And after I paint them, we can now assemble the final cake. Are you prepared for a reveal? heavy. Don't mind me shaking because it is quite heavy. I chipped a toe. <laughs> I promise I will secure them soon so that I don't drop more of them. Focus, focus on her face, her beautiful face. Yeah, I hope the weight was worth it. I hope it's everything that you desired. It is compared to like my head. <laughs> I wish I could have gotten the seams a little bit more seamless, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Donk. Donk shot. Well. Are you happy now? Thank you so much for watching. Also, thank you for your patience. Uh, this was a lot more involved than I expected it to be. I'm hoping that the video shows that this was not an easy task and let me know if there's any other long form videos you would like to see i do want to make a tea party for my frogs in the future and i would also like to try to make part of the cake part part of the cake um out of actual cake which will probably be fun because i am not a cake artist so it may be lumpy and terrifying <laughs>